Hi everyone, I'm Tara Nolan and I'm here today to talk about sustainable marketing. So thank you to the Digital Asia Summit for inviting me to do this. I'm very grateful to be able to share with you what I've got today. So let's get going. But before we do, um, I'd like everyone, no matter where you are, no matter if you're just hearing this in the background or if you're sitting at a desk, I just want you to just take a moment and pause and just relax into your body. And you can close your eyes if you'd like. You can stare at this nice lake photo if you'd like. I just want you to give yourself a moment to just reset. So we'll just take three long breaths together. So you can close your eyes and I'll count to three. And then we can just inhale and exhale together, inhaling through the nose and exhaling out through the mouth. So close your eyes and just, just sit into your body. Just let your shoulders drop back and relax. And on the count of three, we'll take one inhale together. So one, two, three, breathing deep in through the nose and exhaling out through the mouth. And we'll do this again, just twice more at your own pace, breathing in through the nose, deep feeling the air run up through your lungs, up to the crown of your head and exhaling, sighing out through the mouth. And just one more time, breathing deep in through the nose, feeling that oxygen fresh through your lungs and to your body, and then slowly exhaling out through the mouth. And you can slowly flutter open the eyes and come back. And I hope you feel a little refreshed and calm and balanced now, I always do. And I wanted us to just share that moment to just sink into ourselves and be present because it's very important we do that given the state of our lives these days. And I want you also just to, before we get into some of the content, just do a little vision setting exercise and just ask yourself this question, what would you do if you knew that you couldn't fail? Anything, it could be a passion project, it could be a business, it could be anything you want. What is that thing that you want so badly that you might not take those steps towards yet, but that you would do if you knew for sure, no fail. And I want you to just write that down, okay? And before we get to the fun stuff, I think you should probably learn a little bit about myself and why I'm here today speaking to you. And so here you have three images of, of Tara. So you've got Tara walking through the Sahara Desert of Morocco. You've got Yogi Tara practicing in Vieques, Puerto Rico, and you've got Tara in her New York chic black uh, headshot photo. And I share this because there are multi dimensions to me as a person and as a professional, and surely that's the same for you. And I, I mention all of these things because conscious marketing, sustainable marketing is quite personal. And I can tell you that more about me, why I'm here, my credentials, the things I've done. Yes, I have an MBA in international business. Yes, I've worked with some of the largest holding companies worldwide in media and advertising. I have a social following, which is pretty great and, and just fun for me to engage with a community that enjoys this type of content. But more importantly, I share a bit about more about myself, who I am as a person, because conscious marketing is really personal. And it's never been more personal the, the space of marketing as it is today, because it's not just about a brand pushing sales. It's about brands doing better and good in the world. And a lot of that as business leaders, that inspiration that stems from yourself and that stems from how you, you view the world and how you want to create change in the world. And so it's a really interesting time. And we ask ourselves, you know, why now? Why, why sustainability? Why is conscious marketing? Why is this all the rage? And Thank goodness it is, is my, my first response to that. But I'd also say that it's very clear that the business of business is changing and it's not just about shareholder value and making a quick buck. And it is about more so now than ever, the comprehensive and full well-being of employees and all the talent that you have, of yourself, your work-life balance, of society at large, and of course the planet. And so I love that this is kind of front and center, but that doesn't mean there's still a lot of work that has to get done. And there's a lot of issues that kind of need some, some solving. And if you haven't read 
or if you don't know who Larry Fink is, he's the chairman and CEO of BlackRock, which is a major financial institution. And he writes a letter every year to CEOs, an open letter, and you can read it on their website. And I mention this because he has consistently provided this, this knowledge and direction. And this is coming from one of the most significant financial institutions worldwide. And he stresses a lot of things that we all need to be very cognizant of, ESG reporting, how climate change is affecting um, the world at large and specifically investments. And there's even some stats in his most recent letter that call out the fact that there's nearly been from 2019 to 2020, a 100% increase in a sustainable asset investment, which is incredible. Um, and it, it's a huge signal that people care more about businesses that are sustainable and businesses that are aiming to create good in the world. So I highly recommend that you, you take a look at his letters if you haven't already. And that is one signal coupled with the fact that Davos has also reissued their manifesto for their 50th anniversary, stressing that, you know, more than ever, globalization, digitization, all of these things are really combining to offer us a new, a new landscape and a new, a new territory of, of how we conduct business in ourselves. And so you can also take a look at that to further understand um, what that agenda and what that manifesto looks like today. And the other thing I'll just call out as well, which is a little bit more recent news, is PwC PricewaterhouseCoopers, one of the big four accounting firms, is also planning to make a significant investment in their talent to focus on ESG reporting, environmental social governance reporting. And that's, again, just all indicators of where we are moving as, um, as, a, as a world and in the business space specifically. And so if that doesn't clarify enough uh, the importance of how we need to start shifting as businesses, I don't know really what does. But um, I will say as a marketer, when we look to what's happening in the consumer side of things and consumer sentiment as well, there's a couple stats here that I have pulled out from the Havas Group Meaningful Brand Study, which was just produced um, in June 2021. And there's some really interesting numbers we see here. So 71% of consumers are tired of brands pretending that they want to act for good of society where they just want to make money. And I think that's really important to take note of because consumers are smart. And it's very clear today that there's a lot of washing going on. There's the green washing, there's rainbow washing, basically any kind of washing can exist. And that's really it's really lame on the behalf of brands to do that because if they're not standing in their authentic selves and providing information and standing up for what they believe in, that's been proven through their history as a company, then they're going to get called out. And we as consumers will call them out. And the good thing is that 74% um, of consumers think brands must act now, right? So there's a bit of pressure that's being applied more for brands to step up. And if the financial that I just shared with you isn't enough. There's now the consumer pressure, but it's a good pressure because this is really, these are the changes that brands should be making that any business today with the scalability and resources that they have should really be using wisely to do good in the world. And so I'll just communicate some more stats from the Meaningful Brand Study because they're really significant with almost half um, of, of brands are seeing not to be trusted by consumers. And that's that's a lot, you know, that's that's significant. 53% um, of consumers are ready to pay more for a brand that takes a stand on environmental and social issues. So that's an awesome thing. And I, for one, stand in that category. I will certainly spend the extra money if I know that a product's sustainably made, if they pay fair wages and fair labor. So that's, that's good news. And then even more good news, 64% of citizens prefer to buy from companies with a reputation that is all about purpose rather than profits. As you can see, those two are, are pretty inter, intermingled and interchangeable. So that's all really good news because it lends itself to the whole theory of you know, triple, triple bottom line, people, planet, and profit or prosperity. And so these are good signals, um, but they're signals that still really need to to be managed. And so the question is, um, as, as brand marketers, so how do we instill the brand trust and grow that trust and favorabil favorability and increase profits when consumers have a lot of expectations? And so the approach really that I'd like to share with you today, and keep in mind, this is very top level and top line for now, 
is really about sustainable business transformation and the musts for brand marketing. And so when you take a step back and you think about the business that you have today, right? If, if the history of your company didn't exist, what would that vision be of your brand and your business model today? Forget about the legacy stuff, forget about what has been, just think of that vision of what you want your brand and business to be today. And that's really important because there's just been so much rapid change that we can get easily caught in the past and we can hold on to these belief systems and all this, this stuff that weighs us down. But if you try and clear the slate and think about more from an aspirational point of view, what is that vision you have for yourself, for your company, for your brand, for your consumers, for the world at large, that can be really inspiring and really help you drive forward an agenda that will help you get to that next phase. And so these are just some thought starters that, again, at a very macro level of your comprehensive business can help you get there. So the first one is thinking about how you are aligning your mission. And that can mean mostly a lot of things internally. It can obviously influence external as well, but really starting from that place of what would you do if you couldn't fail? What is that business that you want to have today? And then from an internal perspective, really creating that culture of purpose. So I don't care if you have one employee to 10,000, that way of behavior and the values that you instill in your people are extremely important. And I can't stress that enough because if you're the leader of your company and it's your, it's your prerogative, it's your responsibility. It is one of the most important things of a leader today to be able to inspire and inform and educate their people to behave a certain way that will shape the company and that it's kind of like you're the number one brand ambassador, right? At that stage. And you just need to, you need to have that, that cultural operation um, in order to perform your best and to really live your truth. And that applies also to all of the different units you may have within your business. So any operational unit from HR to accounting to marketing, everyone should have the same ethos and belief system. And everyone should also kind of cross-pollinate one another. So these different ways of, of approaching sustainability as an organization, there needs to be communication happening, happening internally. There needs to be sharing of data when applicable, um, which leads me to my point of managing with metrics, right? So every different unit um, can have their more granular KPIs and can have a different approach, but ultimately all of those things need to ladder up to the larger vision that you have and making sure that you're activating accordingly. And then extending those values to the digital realm. So many companies today will do specific reports focused on sustainability or CSR. And that's a really great thing because consumers want to know, as per the stats we saw a few moments ago, what the company is doing. What strides are you making to be a more responsible and ethical and sustainable business? And so the more transparent you can be, the better. Because not only are you, you are applauding your efforts and sharing them, but it's kind of a way of advertising as well, just staying top of mind. It's this frequency of messaging that, hey, look, like we've reduced our carbon footprint by you know, 2% in the past six months by doing X, Y, Z activities. Great. And that's kind of like, it's kind of chic these days to do that. And we care, right? So just considering some of these things from a, a more macro level, um, how your business can holistically approach sustainability is important. But given the nature of this presentation being a little bit more on the marketing side, I also want to explain how a lot of these things translate specifically for brand marketing. And so from a branding perspective, there are different kind of functions and, and pillars, if you will, that you need to consider when shaping a strategy and kind of reconfiguring your business. And so understanding specific fun functional, personal, and collective benefits that people seek from a brand in a given category is super important. And I'll get to that in a minute. Also recognizing the deficit and capitalizing on that for your competitive advantage. You don't want to just follow the leader. You want to be the leader and you want to distinguish yourself. So maybe something's trending and maybe a competitor is doing a great job with making it rain for whatever whatever that might be, but you don't want to just do that because they're doing that. So just keeping keeping tabs on who's doing what is really important and, and getting in when the, the moment's right. Um, thirdly, unlocking that authentic role for your brand to play in a landscape that is completely different from what it was, you know, even yesterday. And so I'll also explain a couple of ways in a moment um, how you can start to do that. 
And then of course, identifying the best strategy and comms approach for your brand to deliver within the customer journey. So this is where it gets really interesting. Um, maybe you have an in-house team, maybe you're using an agency, but the different ways in which you can discover where your audiences are, really hone in on potential customers and your people. And based on what your main messaging and, and key moments are through the year and your marketing calendar, start to weave all of that together and working in tandem with creative as well, start to plan out the best possible ways that you can connect with your consumers along that customer journey from awareness to, to purchase and continuing that loyalty. And then of course, one of my favorite things, leveraging creativity as an accelerant for shareholder value because creativity is an amazing, amazing skill and it can take many different forms. It doesn't have to be the typical, you know, creative director, art director, an idea is an idea and good ideas can come from anywhere. You've probably heard that many times, but I really do believe that to be true. And I'll give you an example um, of something that's been recently brought to my attention of uh, how a great idea can, can really be put to work. So first, starting with this conscious benefit. So I mentioned that there's these three pillars. So we've got personal, collective, and functional. And the personal benefits really come into play when a brand is adding value to someone's life. So this can be on an intellectual level. Maybe it's physical fitness. It's something that is changing my personal life for better. So that's the first pillar. The second, we have collective. So it's the things that a company does, its behavior, its actions, all these different things that respond to what's happening at society with society at large at any given time. So from what we've seen in the past year, we have a lot to choose from, but social justice, the environment, um, our health and wellness, our mental health in particular right now. So that's kind of this bucket of collective benefits that brands can, can dabble in. And then the third, we have the functional. So it's really, how does that product or service of yours deliver? And how is it being presented to the consumer in a way that they can interact with or, or use, right? So it's, it's quite more on the technical side. But all of these things are really important because they all address different needs on the consumer side. And I'll give you just some examples. These probably fit more so in the functional to collective bucket, if you will, but these are all a few just different practices that just as examples to be clear um, on different ways that you can, you can activate. So zero waste packaging, local or regional production, fair wages, um, neutral footprints, water conserving. So these probably aren't shocking, but just to level set, these are just some ways that a brand can, from an operational standpoint, more specifically, really make the changes necessary to deliver on a promise for good. And if there's ever a point where we need inspiration, we have the wonderful United Nations SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. And I constantly reference this as a wonderful framework for any marketer to look at and take a hard look at your business and see where you stand. So there's, like I said, 17 goals. They are best applied when they work together. So there's a, really a lot to choose from here. And there's a lot of different ways that you as a brand can authentically tap into certain needs that have been identified by the United Nations as the 2030 global goals that we're working to achieve. So it's an excellent starting point if you are, like I said, in need of some inspiration or guidance on where you should best place your efforts. Um, but really they're, they're all equally important. And the one that I will call out as a, a really key area of opportunity is number 17, which is partnerships for the global goals, because maybe you feel like your company is too small to make a significant change. That's probably not true because there's always an opportunity for collaboration for the greater good. And you probably have some resources that someone else needs and someone else probably has some resources that you need. So this is where kind of creativity can play a role as well and under understanding what you what value you bring to the table and if you can identify on this list or in any of the sub targets of these goals what you can offer and what you can bring to the table working in tandem with a partner that's where some real magic stuff can happen and so I'd be happy to share some of those examples um, in the future if anyone's interested in reaching out but for the time being I would really look at this, at the SDG framework as the ultimate starting place um, and, and continuing to, to draw inspiration from, because maybe you're already focusing on one and excelling there, but there's a whole other you know, slew of really significant, important targets to consider. 
And on the, the note of um, further creativity and the power of creativity, this is an example of the most recent um, sustainable development goal, Can Lion Winner. And we, I was, as you probably saw on a slide, I was on the jury this year, and we evaluated work not only from um, the past, well, the past two years, which is odd because that never happens, but for obvious reasons, we had two years of work. And the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goal Lion, was introduced just two years ago. And the 2030 calculator was awarded the Grand Prix by myself and my fellow jurors because it created such an opportunity um, to make real impact and real change on a highly scalable level. And so 2030 Calculator is a, a, a product, it's an app that many brands have already been onboarded to use from Allbirds to Ikea, and it calculates the carbon footprint of goods. It uh, doesn't do services yet or experiences, I'm sure they will get to that, but why it's so significant and why I bring it out as a, a creative idea rooted in sustainability is because it, it simply is, and it's quite easy to use, and it just makes back to the measurement and transparency point of everything so simple for consumers to understand. If you're buying this pair of shoes, like this is what's going into it, right? So they source data from all sorts of different places, and it's just an incredible tool that anyone can use. And the more brands that will be onboarded to to use this, the more transparent it'll be across the board from a consumer standpoint, what we actually consume and what's the carbon footprint of that. So it's a really great creative tool and I'm excited to see what they do next. And speaking of on one last point, when we look at measurability, there's many different ways that you can do this, but this is just a very simple, um, scenario of how measurability has changed from traditional reporting being as a business, okay, what's the value of our inputs and how does that translate to the outputs to really looking ahead into things that matter from a sustainable perspective. So the outcome being more so aligned with things like the 2030 calculator, what's the outcome in terms of carbon emissions, right? What's the impact of our efforts on society and, and how is that changing you know, our narrative as a brand, or more importantly, how is that actually shaping the, the role? Like, how are we moving as a, as a society in general? And then, of course, um, lastly, you can also consider the value of that impact. And so you can look at, you know, consumer sentiment or, or different kinds of metrics aligned with what your, your, your industry really stands for and is. But this is just a simple example to show you that traditional reporting has really changed and there's a lot of different territories that you can tap into to better understand um, really where, where you are as a business today and then be able to share that too and communicate that freely. And so I will leave you with this, this one thought, um, looking back on how we considered, you know, what is that thing that you would do if you knew you couldn't fail? And if there's one thing you take away from what I've just talked about today, I want you to, to consider yourself as a resolutions person and to consider yourself as someone that has the skill sets and the talents to create positive change in the world. And maybe that feels a little tricky to figure out, but just knowing that there's tons of opportunity out there and there's tons of people that are on board to co-create with you as well. Um, and really looking to those inherent talents and skills and, and really who you are as a person to be able to bring that out in the world and in the work that you do every day and the businesses that you operate um, and manage and be able to use your talents for good. And so I will leave you with that. And um, if you have any questions or if you'd like to interact, there is some contact info here. Um, but that concludes what I have to share with you today. Thank you so much, Tara. That was very inspiring, I must say. So I have like two, three questions for you. So first question, as you rightly said, that a lot of brands, they are talking about sustainable marketing, but the, at the end, they're just making money from it. Whereas a lot of small brands I see these days, they are working on sustainable marketing or sustainability, but they are not able to market themselves. And as a result, they are, they are not able to sustain themselves. So what is your advice to these small brands? Those who are working question. on sustainability. 
Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and it's kind of a tricky one because every business is different for a variety of reasons. Um, but the first thing that comes to mind is, like I said a few moments ago, really focusing on the power of partnerships and understanding what resource you have, what resource you, you might need that someone else can offer and using that ability to co-create. And so it's it's kind of tricky, you know, when it comes to marketing, you know, are you talking about a social media campaign and content creation and creativity? Are you talking about email marketing management? Or, you know, there's a lot of different levers that you can you can um, lean into, but also considering that from a budget perspective, if this is a more financial skewing question, there is a lot of different tools out there that you can use to create content and do it in a not only authentic way, but a way that affords you um, the opportunity just to just to get your, your word out and your brand out there. And so it's really more so rooted in social media, I would say the opportunity to be able to deliver. And I don't like to say it's free because you know your your time costs something, right? And so it's it's not like you're gonna be paying someone to to manage these things, but ultimately if you're the the sole entrepreneur, you're gonna be the one creating that content. And that that does come with the cost because it's your time. However, it is probably one of the best ways that you can begin and establish yourself to create that groundswell that you're looking for. And a couple quick ways, just tactics I'll I'll share with you. Um, you know, if you're using Instagram, doing an Instagram live with someone, saving that that video on your profile, um, sharing reels. Everyone loves reels on Instagram now, so you can easily do some of those and inform people of why your brand is special, why your product is great. Share some of maybe some examples of how you're supporting, you know, your your local economy or or things like that as it re relates to your business and your brand. Um, you can also use social audio these days. That's a really popular space to to play in. So Spotify's Green Room or Clubhouse as well. And I find those forums to be um, quite engaging right now because they are social audio is kind of a new um, media territory, and there's a lot of collaboration happening across those platforms. But that's the key word is the collaboration element if you're a small brand and looking to others for support, um, whether they're like minded brands or brands with the same values and mission and overall goal and being able to through social share audience as well. So getting exposure on someone's platforms that might have like 20k more followers. That's great because then you're being exposed to that audience that can then come over to you. And the last thing I'll say when it comes to, to social is always being very clear of the mechanics you have going on on the back end and if there's a clear call to action for the consumer. So maybe you do some kind of social audio event and maybe there is a promotion that you want to share within that segment or maybe there is a, hey, head over to my Facebook or my Instagram or my Twitter and you can sign up for our email newsletter list. There's gonna be promotions happening all the time, blah, blah, blah. And that way you're taking audience from platforms that you don't own and taking them onto platforms that you do own such as an email newsletter list. That's quite helpful. A lot of insights. Thank you so much for that. And yeah. so my another question, what is your advice to the people who want to make a career in sustainable marketing? Because I don't think that a lot of institutes or any institute is offering that degree program or that course. So how to go about it? Yes, that's another great question. You know, when I was in school, I didn't sustainable marketing, that, that wasn't really an offer. That wasn't really an option. I think it's becoming more available now um, as, a, as a course route, um, specifically in finance and, and accounting, for sure. <clears throat> sustainable accounting metrics now are, are, are very available. Um, but I think a lot of it, it starts with just educating yourself and starting to just create your own kind of brand and thought leadership and perspective on these things. And you have to be careful with that, of course, because whenever you're publishing something, say if you write something on your LinkedIn, you you of course has to have to source everything and be transparent and be clear that it's a valid source and it's not just something weird from the internet. But um, I think just creating and shaping and adding your voice to the conversation is the most easy way to start if you're not pursuing a um, more academic route. And 
it kind of it kind of fits the same question you just asked in terms of small brands wanting to to make a splash and i, I think the same kind of theory holds true for someone that might not have that education but wants to work within this field and it comes down to the networking and it comes down to the collaboration and you know maybe you write an article and tap a couple really significant leaders in a given industry that focus on sustainability and quote them in an article you write so there's different ways that you can start to build relationships with people that you want to but it really starts with the proactivity and commitment to being consistent and delivering value on what you stand for and what you believe in that's so true uh, i guess collaborative effort can uh, make the difference and my last question is related to the quote that you shared that chase the vision and not the money so this is one question that i asked uh, to almost everyone that i interview uh, and i would like to ask the same question to you as well that if you were in a utopian world where money didn't matter what would you do whoa that's a great question i probably would utopian world i would have a beautiful healing center somewhere amazing in nature with the mountains and the sea and we would do yoga practice yoga every day um, meditate we would garden we would farm we would have views of the sea we can go swimming we there wouldn't be a thing of there wouldn't be a divide of you know locals versus visitors we would just all be one um supporting each other and i sound like such a hippie saying this <laughs> <laughs> and I'm surprised at how uh, how clear this vision is coming to me. Um, but I think it would be, you know, everyone on an equal playing field and enjoying nature and, and not having to um, have any real hard worries about, you know, societal issues and climate issues. And to your point, not having to worry about financial issues. So that is the absolute utopian um, vision would, would be, uh, wow, peace on earth. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> I'm such a cliche. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Tara thank you for such a wonderful session I, I enjoyed it yes I did as well thank you very much I appreciate it